What is up guys, Greedy Knight here with a discussion on Element. It turns out that Element in Sunbreak is not balanced. It is overtuned for most weapons and validating raw builds and status builds. Moving forward into Monster Hunter 6, I'll be identifying what happened to Element and how it centralized the meta in Sunbreak. Let's get into it. Element weapons in Sunbreak are very good. Every single weapon has at least 50 element at base, a mix of long white and purple sharpness with zero noticeable drawbacks save for having no slots on the weapon. None of the good weapons have negative affinity, abysmal raw attack, or abysmal element. In previous games, at least one of the elemental weapons had a lackluster best option, so you had to settle for worse damage on the relevant matchups for that element, or just use the raw builds. For base game, the maximum element is locked at 50 element, but once master rank rolls around, it rises to prominence because the cap is removed. This is why you consistently see base game meta primarily focus on raw, and DLC meta shift to element for relevant weapons. Monster hit zones restrict how good element is. The roster of monsters has a pool of elemental weaknesses that dictate how effective element is against the entirety of that monster hunter installment. Element is considered effective when it outperforms raw builds. During the hunt, monsters that change elemental resistances have terrible element hit zones or the favorable hit zones are kept out of effective range of the hunter results in an anti-element meta. In context to Sunbreak, there are only 3 element hit zone swapping monsters and only a handful of monsters that keep their good hit zones out of reach. Most monsters with terrible hit zones in general have a break mechanic that lets you exploit it during the middle or end part of a hunt. Thanks to the increased mobility provided by the wirebugs, most weapons can now precisely choose their hit zones, resulting in higher overall element and total damage compared to raw builds. Element weapons used to be expensive to build for. You had to build one of each element type and upgrade all of them to max level. While this may be true in Sunbreak, there are a few changes to how this was achieved. Farming for element weapons was made notably easier than in past games. The weapon tree UI lets you see the best weapons to build as well as the materials required to craft them. And the weapons tend to only feature one monster as its source material. On top of that, in Sunbreak, the material requirement was lowered to encourage experimentation with different builds. The forge versus upgrade option gives you two modes of obtaining a given weapon, and you can buy mantles for any weapons. You can obtain all five meta picks for your main and get value out of that increased damage much sooner than you could in previous games. It made element accessible, letting anyone join the element club. Element builds were expensive before Worldborn. You have to hit 15 points for the 10% plus 6 flat element boost with 10 points for element attack up and a 10% boost while still leaving enough room for attack slash crit boost and any necessary skills like guard, sharpness, maintenance, and so on. This was an expensive requirement in theory and impossible in practice. The majority of endgame sets restricted you from having both engines on a given set so it was common for one or the other to be run in most games. You opted for element builds because they offered more damage than raw boosts. However, everything changed when the point system did. Element was reduced to 5 points, which fit into level 1 slots, so it's super easy, barely an inconvenience to get that 20% plus 4 flat element boost for every element. While blessings, bursts, and element exploit were first armor locked, those two got decoration equivalents in Sunbreak. You ran two levels of blessings for the 10% boost, while both burst and element exploit were front loaded skills that benefited the most from its first level with diminishing returns on its subsequent levels. For pre-world, your net value for 25 points of investment was a 20% plus 6 flat boost with no additional boosts available in the game. For Sunbreak, the net point investment is 7 points of level 1 slots and 2 points of level 2 slots for a 20% plus 4 flat boost, a 10% boost to fire, water, or ice, another 10% boost but on 20 or higher elemental hit zones, and a plus 5 raw and element boost. For less space on the set, you get more elemental damage out of your skills with the Sunbreak system, letting you have both attack, crit engine with your element engine on every set. 
You hit a minimum of 80 element for every element with this combo before accounting for augments. Previous games hit a maximum of 60 pre-world and 75 pre-sunbreak. Normally, the mathematical changes would not be enough to warrant more weapons joining the element club, but a good number of weapons did receive multi-hitting moves in Sunbreak. Dual Blades is the poster child for element, but Bow did follow suit. Charge Blade was buffed on the element file side, giving it the 11.25 element multiplier for SAED, 13.5 if you use Counter Morph Slash. Gunners were always using element weapons slash ammo for relevant matchups and Sword and Shield dabbled in element as well depending on the installment. However, Hammer, Hunting Horn, Longsword, Lance, Insect Glaive, and Switch Axe, which are traditionally not element weapons, were given either a multi-hit, a buff to their base moveset, and or a buff to their element multipliers. The only weapons that abstained from the element meta were Greatsword and Gunlance. Greatsword's best playstyle? is spamming strong arm true charge slashes while shelling gun lines ignores everything that isn't a buff to shelling damage. Everything else aims for the five elements. The reason why element is oppressively dominant in Sunbreak is because of the unique element engines, weapon slash armor augments, and curious smelting. The overall power of a Sunbreak Hunter is already cracked, but adding a 100 plus element into the mix buried the raw build alive and kicking. It expanded the slight damage lead into a multiplicative one. 25%, 50%, or 100% stronger than raw builds warrants that you don't run raw builds, especially in an anomaly investigation where the monster has inflated health while taking more damage from all sources of damage including element. In order to keep the monster down via Curio Topples, you use all forms of damage types in order to maximize your damage output. For Augments, the values are tilted in favor of Element. The Augment for Raw Attack is 20 for level 4, while Element gets 35 for level 8, with room for plus 5 attack using level 1. The slot boost gives a hefty 40 raw, making your final boost 60 raw on both raw and status weapons. The slot augment for element is 25 raw attack and 18 element, resulting in 30 raw and 53 element. Even if the raw to element was a 1 to 1 in damage output, which it isn't, the element augment is ahead by 23 points. To add insult to injury, the 20 points of sharpness that raises most white sharpness weapons into purple results in a net 7% boost for raw, while element enjoys the 7% boost from raw with the 8.5% boost from element. The element augment is just better for damage resulting in the massive damage gap between raw and element, ignoring skills. The unique element engines broke the element build. The red scroll consists of Dragon Conversion, Furious, and Dereliction, while the blue scroll consists of Berserk and Mill of Hellfire. Strife is a constant, but it applies an extra 5% boost for Mill of Hellfire slash Berserk, as well as a 20% affinity boost. Frostcraft is used for weapons that can sheath consistently throughout the hunt. When paired with the base element engine and the augments, these skills guarantee 200 element for every element weapon. Element damage has always been a multiplier so the stupid damage numbers shown in trendy time attack clips are a result of insanely high values getting multiplied by what would be normally balanced numbers. Paired with universal long white slash purple sharpness, those values are sustained throughout the hunt. The curious armor augment raises the overall power level of your armor set, letting you augment most previously armor restricted skills onto any other piece you want mainly the aforementioned red and blue scroll skills. This lets you prioritize the formal armor restricted skills on your set and then you could combine that with your choice of red or blue scroll element boost. On title update 5 and BU sets, slots are abundant so all of your slots will be used to accommodate the base element engine and then your non-element engines in attack crit and any functional skills. The final nail in the coffin was the Curious Charm, which replaces a subpar armor piece or acts as the sixth armor piece in the presence of a good set, depending on good RNG. Cyclist lets you control your RNG to get usable but sane skills like Dragonheart 4, while Vigor unlocks Pandora's Box if you rolled hard enough for a God Charm. Dereliction, Mail of Hellfire, Dragon Conversion, Strife, Furious, and Berserk 
were all obtainable at optimal levels with additional skills and slots if the charm machine permitted it. 1 in 50 charms was likely to be a rarity 10 and it was just a question of whether it was usable or not. But if you are blessed, your sets automatically became stronger for it. You can reach the theoretical damage peak in real time. You were guaranteed the option to stack strife with either build. Frostcraft could be thrown into the mix for relevant weapons to have your damage numbers soar even higher. In comparison, raw builds could only practically make use of Dragonheart, Dereliction, and Frostcraft without drawbacks. You can easily crack 250 element when all of your skills are active so you command the actual elements with the swing of your blade or the firing of your nukes. When you look at the number of buffs element received in Sunbreak it's no question why element is so good in this installment. But moving forward into Monster Hunter 6, a good portion of these changes can be kept while keeping element in check. However, if Capcom is going to add skills like Dragon Conversion, make sure there's a raw attack equivalent for that skill. Like if this video was useful to you, consider subscribing if you want to see more analysis videos like these. Comment your thoughts on the video, that's all I got for this one. Greedy Knight, signing out.